My name is Bongu Mashel Fred, and welcome to this online classroom. I want to handle atomic structure and periodicity, uh, periodicity of the atomic structure and the chemical family, that's the entire topic. But for now, just going to, to tackle one, uh, one area. And in this area, is just the first topic in uh, Form 2, whereby we handle the atomic structure. Uh, in this area, my focus is just going to be students, we need to understand that the atom is the smallest particle of an element that takes part in a chemical reaction. We have two points here. It means that the atom is part of an element is that small particle that is part of an element, and that small particle can take part in a chemical reaction. Now, this atom is made up of three other small particles, which we call subatomic particles. And these particles, we have the proton, we have the electron, and we have the neutron. Now, the proton, it is uh, positively charged. It has a positive charge. And uh, it is found at the center of the atom, whereby we call that place the nucleus. The mass, which is a relative mass of the proton, is normally one. And the number of protons in an atom is equal or is normally called the atomic number. Now this is a, a, a summary of what we expect to see in, a, in an atom, that is the protons. The second subatomic uh, particle is the electron, and this electron as the following properties. One, it is negatively charged. It has a negative charge. It is negatively charged. That is the, pro uh, the electron. It is found in a fixed region surrounding the center of an atom, meaning it is surrounding the nucleus. And uh, this fixed region is called the energy level, or in some advanced level, it is called the orbitals. That is the energy levels where the electrons are found. It has a relative mass of 1 over 1,840, meaning is the lightest element of the three. Actually, most its mass is negligible in some instances. The number of protons and the electrons of an element is equal. Let us look at the neutron. The neutron is neither positive nor negative. It means it has no charge. So we can't say whether a neutron it is positively charged or negatively charged. The protons are found at the center of the atom and we call that center the nucleus. So the same center, it is occupied by neutrons. Therefore, the neutrons and the protons occupy the center of the atom and the relative mass of the neutron is also one and the number of protons and the neutrons of an atom when we sum them together that's the protons and you sum together with the neutrons they give what we call the mass number the mass number.
that's what we term it the mass number. Now here I have a diagram which tries to describe what uh, we have just discussed. And in this case, here is the center where we call the nucleus, the center. And in this center we have the neutron and the proton. Then here we have what we have said the, new, the regions which are fixed and in these regions that are fixed they occupy the electrons. These regions we have said they are called energy levels or orbitals and this is whereby we have the negatively charged particles whom we have said are called the electrons. And the positively charged are called the protons, which occupy the same center with the neutrons that have no charge. Now, these diagrams. This is an example, I'm giving a, a, a vivid example of carbon, which has six protons. It has six protons. And six neutrons. And then we have also electrons, which are negatively charged surrounding the nucleus. Now, if we look at other 20 elements in the periodic table, this is the distribution of the protons. For instance, Hydrogen has one proton, one electron, and zero neutron. We say the mass number is the sum of protons and neutrons. These two, they give us the mass number when you add the two. Therefore, if you add 1 plus 0, the mass number is 1. And the atomic number is the same as the number of protons or electrons. When you come to helium, it has two protons, two electrons, and two neutrons. But for us to have the mass number, we will sum these protons plus the neutrons and we get 4 as the mass number. We go to boron, it has 5 protons, 6 neutrons, 5 plus 6, we get 11 as the mass number. And the number of electrons, which is the same as the number of protons, is also the same as the number of the atom's atomic number. If you go to fluorine, it has 9 protons, it has 10 neutrons, therefore we have 19 as the mass number. And the atomic number is 9 because the number of electrons, which is also equal to the number of protons, is 9. Now, we go to calcium, which is the last one, I'm not going to, the, it has, we have 20 protons, 20 electrons, 20 neutrons, atomic number is 20, and the mass number is 20 plus 20, which gives us 40 as the mass number. 
Now, when we write this, there is a special notation we give whenever we write now the symbol of an atom plus it is a uh, atomic number and the mass number. It means most of atoms exist as isotopes and isotopes, these are atoms of the same element but having different neutrons therefore if the neutrons are different it means the mass number is going to be different different so these atoms of the same element they have the same protons or the same atomic number so they share this as the same protons or atomic number but the neutrons is going to change and the mass number is changing so by convention Isotopes are written with the mass number as a superscript and the atomic number as a subscript. For instance, if X is our element and our mass number is 40, it's written on top here as a superscript. And if 20 is our atomic number, it's written here below as the subscript. That's how we write an element by convention. I'm going to give you examples so that you see exactly what uh, we mean. For instance, by conventional method of writing the mass number and atomic numbers of the first 20 elements, we have hydrogen 1, 1, the top one which is the superscript is the mass number, helium 4 is the mass number, lithium 7 is the mass number, beryllium 9 is the mass number. 1 is the atomic number, 2 here is the atomic number. We go to arbitrary argon, 40 is the mass number, 18 is the atomic number. We go to sulfur, 32 is the, uh, is the mass number, and 16 is the atomic number. Here we have a table that shows some of the common naturally occurring isotopes of some elements. <clears throat> For instance, hydrogen exists as three isotopes. We have hydrogen one with one, one with one, uh, a mass number of one. That is, is called the, the most common one, hydrogen. We have one that is called deuterium with a mass number of two. Another one called tritium with a mass number of three. So what makes the difference here is the protons, we have said these are atoms of the same element. It means they're having the same number of protons, one, one. They're having the same number of electrons, one, one. But the number of neutrons is varying. Hydrogen, one, it has zero neutron. Hydrogen 2, it has 2 neutrons. 3, it has 3 neutrons. So when we want to get the mass number, or the atomic number, is the same as the protons, which is 1. The same as the neutrons, which is 1. The same 1 is the same as 1. Is the same as 1. 3, 1, 1. But when we want to get the mass number, the mass number is going to be the sum of protons plus neutrons. So in this case, hydrogen one, which is the, the common hydrogen, it has one proton, I add zero neutron, I get a mass number of one. This one has one proton, I add two neutrons, I know I add, it has a, it is about to be having one neutron, one neutron. When I add one neutron, I get two as the mass number. The third one is supposed to be two neutrons. There was a typing error. So it is one plus two, we get three. That is how the mass numbers of one, two and the three are arrived at.
Now, that's going to be the, the end of today's class. In our next class, we are going to discuss on how to calculate the life, uh, the abundance of each isotope. I just welcome you to my class, Bongo Machete Fred YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and find all lessons in chemistry in my YouTube channel. Just subscribe, comment and like. Whatever improvement you want, whatever question you want me to address, comment below in the comment section. Any improvement, any suggestions is welcome. Comment, subscribe, share to your friends too, to my YouTube channel, Bongo Machete Fred. We want to simplify chemistry for everyone. So just go to the next video, which is also addressing the next topic and the other topics which you may wish to watch. Bongo Machete Fred YouTube channel is the education of the modern student. Welcome.